Hi, in this video series I'm going to be talking about switching from Windows to Linux. If you haven't seen part 1 before, I highly recommend you check it out. Now we're going to have a look at what we need to install Linux and the distribution I'm going to choose and the reasons why I chose that one specifically. So the first thing we need to install Linux is a USB flash drive. I'm going to use this one of 32 gigabytes. But anything that has more than a couple gigabytes on it will work just fine. So this is needed to boot the live CD. Next, we need an external hard drive. When a USB stick will work for this purpose, I'm preferring the use of a high capacity mechanical hard drive or SSD with a nice case around it right here which is going to be used for backing up information and for uh, moving large files onto if you don't have enough space to install Linux. Next, to access the BIOS and group settings, group is for bootloader of Linux, we're going to be needing a wired USB or PS2 keyboard. It will also be used for accessing the live Linux environment. For that, we'll also need a USB mouse. This is a wireless mouse, but it has both Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz via a USB dongle. The last one is very important for the installation of Linux. And finally, we need a Linux distro and some knowledge about partitions. So if we're going to open up the Windows Explorer, and that's called for Kenner, we're only going to see when no external devices are hooked up and no DVD, SD card or any other external media device are inserted a C drive. In some cases you might also see a D drive. The C drive is actually just a partition on the entire hard drive inside of a computer. To have a look at all of our partitions we're going to type part in the search bar. The first partition we come across on commercial builds is a restore partition. It is used to restore the computer in case it no longer boots up. Or it has some kind of virus or other malware that is preventing it from being used normally. The second partition is a system partition. It is used to store important parameters about the computer and the operating system installed. The third partition here is the C drive. The C drive is where the actual operating system of Windows and the files are located. Now some computers might have additional partitions, but there can be no more than four main partitions here. The last partition is either a uh, internet restore partition based on Linux or a D drive, which is used for data storage. <coughs> Remove this partition if you want to install a fully fledged version of Linux. Once we know how many partitions there are and that we have enough room left to install Linux, we're actually now going to find the distribution. One of the most well-known, beginner-friendly and widely documented distros is Linux Mint. And it could be found by going to www.linuxmint.com. I'll put a link in the description of this video. So here it is, uh, the latest version of the operating system. You're going to click the download link when you're ready to install it. But there are actually three editions of Linux Mint. The first is the Cinnamon edition, which is the most popular one. There is also the Mate edition and the XFCE edition for more uh, lower end computers and computers which are a couple of years old. Now let's go back to the Windows Explorer to have a look at how much room we have left. In theory, any room that we've got here, this free space, could be taken from the partition by making the room unallocated. 
However, be aware that you should not remove all free space at once, but rather a small amount of space should be made unallocated for the installation of Linux. It is also important, perhaps not imperative, that you remove any programs and files you don't need and you are not going to need in the near future. Then we are going to take a small chunk, at least 10 gigabytes for installation, though 30 or more gigabytes if you want to uh, use Linux for any creative purposes like drawing, video editing or application development and add to that 20% of what you plan on leaving free for Linux, uh, which is to prevent fragmenting. Linux systems often don't need to fragment, but uh, they might uh, cause fragmentation when the system partition of Linux is almost filled up. Then add half of your memory. In our case we have 4 gigs of RAM, so that would be 2 additional gigs for swap partition. That is the amount of room that you should free. Type part in the search bar in Windows. Then right click the C drive and you'll see the option to shrink the volume. Wait for the shrinking to be prepared successfully. Here we enter the amount of free space that we want to uh, take away from the C drive. Click the shrink button. I'm not going to do that. In fact, I've closed the entire partition management program uh, because I'm not quite going to install Linux Mint just yet. I'm firstly going to download it and burn it onto a flash drive. Like I've said before, the first step is to go to www.linuxmint.com and then click the download button then based on uh, how capable your computer is we're going to select the cinnamon mate or xfce edition i'm going to click on uh, the new features button to have a look at the uh, applications and features of the uh, distribution so that I could check which one is the best for me but they all work pretty much the same way internally because I have only 4 gigabytes of RAM which is not much but not extremely small or old either I'm going to click for the Mate edition which uses fewer resources than the Cinnamon edition but has more features than the XFCE edition so I'm going to click the download button then go to the installation guide to see what the system requirements are well there's only 64 bit Linux Mint so 32 bit uh, it's now extremely rare so we're not going to use Linux Mint on 32 bit you can but if it isn't compatible you're just getting error message okay with that out of the way I can now click the download button but be aware that there are quite a lot of download links so I'm going to download the Netherlands version because that's the country I'm in when possible. Yep, there it is. I'm going to go to uh, Light Server to get the ISO and wait. Meanwhile, I'm also going to have a look at two more programs that we actually need to do this. The first is an SSA 256 verification system or program so here is the uh, is how you do that on uh, windows so that is uh, set util 
hash file then file location type SSA A256 I'm going to do that after the download has completed and another program we need to look at is Rafus uh, Rafus is a program that allows you to uh, create a bootable USB in the easy way as they say uh, it's also very fast much more faster than uh, unit booting USB installer or even Berliner Etcher download the latest version if you don't have it but I already have the latest version of Rafus so I can open it up and have a preview of it so here you select your USB drive after having plugged it in of course then we select disk or ISO image uh, to be exact we're going to go into where we've got the Linux Mint ISO and here I can select for uh, all the BIOSes but we're not going to do that because we have UAFI we can check this by going into sysinfo uh, assume UEFI if you have Windows 10 uh, running in UEFI mode as seen here <coughs> it might run in legacy mode which requires a complete reinstallation before you are capable of installing Linux aside of Windows in a dual boot setup. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because uh, I want to transition away from Linux uh, I mean uh, I'm going to try to transition away from Windows to Linux uh, instead of just doing a clean install so that I can keep all my files a similar check is secure boot uh, no, and another system actually here I can see state secure boot turned off this is how the settings must be if secure boot is turned off go to the BIOS and turn off secure boot I'm not going to tell you how to do that because A my computer doesn't have secure boot and B every BIOS is a little bit different now that the download has been completed we're going to download the SHA uh, key which is a verification key now that we've got this key we're going to enter a command prompt and we're going to type search util dash hash file uh, and we're going to find a in which a folder of the files downloaded. So we're going to go to the C drive, then open the users or whatever it is in your local language folder, then open your username and then download. So that's probably where it's going to be located. <coughs> then we're going to copy the path in the search bar of Explorer by double clicking it or by selecting it with the mouse pressing ctrl c and adding it after certutil dash hash file and then add sha256 and press enter oh no now it occurred so actually we must also add the file name i forgot that so file name we're also going to copy exactly by pressing change name selecting the full name and pressing control C and adding it right here then press enter and a file with a hash will be created <coughs> Next, let's copy this in a notepad. And get the code for the hash file. That is on the official website. Now we can see that both codes are exactly the same. So we're ready to burn the file onto a USB drive. Once again, I've said before, 
I'm going to use Rufus for this. So I'm going to plug the USB flash drive into the computer and there it is. I've installed Lubuntu on this first but I've now decided to forego that option and instead use Linux Mint. It's probably going to be pretty much the same in principle because both are based on Ubuntu. Next, all we really need to do is not change anything else and hit the start button. Right in the ISO mode, hit OK and here uh, I'm going to hit yes because we would need syslinux uh, you know so apparently uh, the syslinux cannot be uh, ignored in any way even if I remove all the allocations of the drive so I'm going to click yes to download these files from the internet now it's going to give me yet another warning all data on the USB flash drive will be removed uh, so I'm going to click OK to confirm with that because there's nothing on this drive so if you have anything important on your USB flash drive copy it over to your external hard drive before commencing the same thing happens if you have anything on the D drive that you want to keep because it must be removed like I said before when you want to install Linux that is because you cannot have more than four partitions on the same drive. At least primary partitions as they're called. So let's mm, let Rufus do its thing eh? <coughs> I've actually tried removing the entire uh, installation partition off the USB drive and even then the system recognized an older version or different distribution of Linux so it has downloaded the files just to make sure that it will work And we're done. All you need to do is click close. Plug in the USB keyboard and restart the computer. I'm going to hit the uh, button that's needed to enter the BIOS or boot menu. In this case, I'll need to press delete to enter the BIOS. So once it restarts, I'm going to hit that button multiple times until I actually see the computer into the BIOS. There we go, and we're going to go into a boot option and set the first boot device to a removable device 
and then set the second to Windows Boot Manager. Next we're going to save and exit setup. Hopefully it's going to boot from the external drive when applicable, which it is right now. We're going to expect this to take quite a while. <coughs> and nice. My attempt was futile. So let's try again to set the removable drive on the first priority, which is to use the F11 button to go into the boot menu on this computer and simply boot from the USB flash drive. Oh, it's F12. There we go. Now I'm going to press UEFI. And hit Start Linux Mint. This is going to take quite a while as well. There we go. So. Now we're in what's called a live operation environment. So once we're there, we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Connect our Bluetooth devices, if applicable. As you can see here, this is all of the CPUs. I've only got 2% uh, percent on the second core and 3% on the fourth core, 23-4%, uh, which is quite an energy saving compared to Windows. And on the RAM side of things, only about 869.2 megabytes are used by the operating system instead of 2 gigabytes uh, by Windows. So you can actually see how much more efficient Linux is. That's why I'm going to prepare my computer to install Linux on it and to uh, have a look at that process. Okay, so the last thing to do right now in Windows is to go to Part, okay, and shrink the actual C drives. You cannot shrink the other ones. So I'm going to say shrink and wait. Meanwhile, I've got to keep my calculator handy because I'm going ahead and calculate how much room I need to install in. So I'm going to assume uh, I initially wanted 50 gigabytes, uh, the minimum for any framework I think should be 30 gigabytes. If you don't have that available, uh, on your hard drive at all, just wipe it out. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to add uh, 40 gigabytes, which is a sweet spot. Sweet uh, spot. Yep, that is 40. Uh, divide it by 100 and multiply it by 120 uh, to get this uh, fragmenting buffer. And add between brackets uh, the amount of RAM, which is 4. In my case, 4 gigabytes, and divide it by 2, and that gets me to a nice even 50 gigabytes. So I'm going to multiply that by 1024 and type in 51200 megabytes. <coughs> now I've got about 117,090 megabytes on my actual C drive, which would be. 
still about 172 gigabytes. I'm going to hit enter and wait. This is going to take quite a while, but hopefully no files will be removed. Oh, there we go. I've got 50 gigabytes of non-allocated space and we can reboot our computer now. Okay, so we are back in the live operating environment. I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi network again now. Okay. And then there is the install program. So I'm going to select my language here. There we go. Dutch. Continue by setting the keyboard up. Installing multimedia codecs should be important if you want to web browse or watch some videos. It's going to take some time. And here is why we have created that 50 gigabytes a reduction of space on the uh, C drive. Uh, Linux Mint now detects that we can install Linux Mint right next to Windows. So we're going to do that by clicking install now. And Clicking continue, clicking the region, entering my user information, and then waiting while Linux Mint is being installed in unallocated space. So Linux Mint uh, is booting up, it has already booted up. So post installation, uh, there are quite a couple of steps to take. The first one is to set up Bluetooth devices again. So here we're setting up System Restore. So we're going to select a drive, internal drive, and then I'm going to do monthly. And click next, next, and finish. Reverse time shift. So I've already got my Bluetooth devices connected. And well, that is it. I am now running Linux Mint alongside Windows. Now let's reboot the computer and see what happens when I reboot back into Windows. It should work just fine. So first we're going to get the group. There it is. And then I'm going to select Windows Boot Manager and voila! Windows is starting up. So I've actually got the setup to that. Windows still has a majority of space and Linux just has 50 gigabytes. That sound never gets old to me. Ah! Now I'm going to select Windows on the keyboard, which is 2. This keyboard I'm no longer going to use for my smartphone, what's the point? I'm going to use 3 for Linux. And that is how to install Linux Mint alongside Windows. So next time, I'm going to optimize and uh, customize your operating system. See you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends. And perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.